Welcome to Daily Conversation. This is Mr. K. This is Eric. Yeah, today is the 25th of September 2021. And the time now is 6.16 a.m. Well, today is a reading session and we are going to read the book Eat to Beat Disease. All right, so before we get started, please click the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. All right, so here we go. Okay, so we start from line 67 introduction. Introduction. There are truly a turning point in the fight against disease. Each of us has enormous opportunities to take charge of our lives using food to transform our health. We can make decisions about what to eat and drink based on scientific evidence, wins from testing foods with the same systems and methods that have been used to discover and develop drugs. The data generated when we study foods like medicines clearly show that food can influence our health in specific and beneficial ways. First, a bit about myself. I'm a medical doctor, an internal medicine specialist, and a research scientist. In college, I study biochemistry, now called molecular and cellular biology. And I spent the first half of my career immersed in the world of biotechnology. For the past 25 years, I've led the angiogenesis Angiogenesis Foundation, a nonprofit organization that I co founded in 1994 with a unique mission to improve global health by focusing on a common denominator shared by many diseases. Angiogenesis, the process, our, the process our bodies use to grow new blood vessels. As a scientist, finding common denominators of disease has long been my interest and passion. Most, med most medical research is dedicated to exploring the individuality of disease, searching what makes each disease distinct from every other as the path toward finding cures. My approach has been the complete opposite by looking for common thread shared by many diseases and asking if those threads might lead to new treatments. I found it is possible to achieve breakthrough not only for one disease, but many diseases at the same time. Early in my career, I Chose, I chose to study angiogenesis. Blood vessels are essential for health because they bring oxygen and nutrients to every cell in our body. My mentor, Judah Forkman, was a brilliant surgeon scientist at Harvard who first came up with the idea that targeting abnormal blood vessels Feeding cancer could be an entirely new way to treat the disease. Angiogenesis gone awry is not just a problem in cancer, but also a common denominator in more than 70 different diseases, including the world's other top killers, heart disease, stroke, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, 
ob obesity and more. In 1993, I had an inspiration. What if controlling blood vessels developments could be a singular approach to address all of these serious diseases? Over the past 25 years, along with the long rosters of amazing colleagues and supporters, this work is precisely what the Angiogenesis Foundation has been doing. We have coordinated research and advocated for new treatments, taking this common denominator approach. We've worked with more than 300 of the brightest scientists and clinicians from North America, Europe, Asia, Australia, and Latin America. More than 100 innovative companies in biotechnology, medical devices, and diagnostic and imaging technologies, and visionary leaders from the National Institutes of Health. The Food and Drug administrations and major medical societies from around the world. We have been very successful. By coordinating collective efforts, a new field of medicine called an angiogenesis-based therapy has been created. Some of the innovative treatments stop blood vessels from growing in diseased tissues, such as in cancer or in blinding diseases like neovascular, age-related, macular degeneration, and diabetic retin retinopathy. retinopathy. Other treatments that have changed medical practice spark new blood vessels to heal vital tissues, such as in diabetic and venous leg ulcers. Today, there are more than 32 FDA-approved drugs, medical devices, and tissue products based on angiogenesis. These treatments, once just glimmers of ideas, have become important new standards of care in on oncology, ophthalmology, and wound care, helping patients live longer and better lives. We've even worked with veterinarians and developed new treatments that have helped save the lives of pet dogs. Dolphins, fish, reptiles, and rhinoceros, and even a polar bear. I'm proud to have been part of these events, advances and given the more than 1,500 ongoing clinical trials in angiogenesis. There are certainly more to come. Okay. Uh... The third line from bottom, uh, which is this word, is rhinoceros, and you pronounce as rhinoceros. Rhinoceros. But despite all of the success, the sobering fact is that the rates of new disease are skyrocketing. 
the biggest health threats for people worldwide are the non-communicable diseases, which include cancer, heart disease, stroke, diabetes, obesity, and neurodegenerative conditions. We each know someone in our lives who has suffered from or su succumb, succumbed to one of these diseases. According to the World Health Organization, cardiovascular disease killed 17.7 million people in 2015, cancer 8.8 .8 million, and diabetes 1.8 million. Even with remarkable treatments, breakthroughs, and FDA approvals, treatments of disease alone is not a sustainable solution for non communicate for non-communicable diseases in part because of the threat of the stratospheric cost of new drugs. It can cost more than two billion to develop a single new biotechnology drug. This expense of using some of the latest drugs after they've received FDA approval is staggering, ranging in some cases from 200,000 per year to more than 900,000 per year. Since few can afford these price tags, the, the most advanced treatments don't get to everyone who need them, while the growing and aging population keeps getting sicker. Drug treatments alone cannot keep us healthy. The question then becomes, how can we do a better job at preventing disease? Before we have to cure it, one modern answer, food. Every doctor knows that poor diet is linked to preventable disease, and food is becoming a topic of ever greater importance in the medical community. Some advent, advent, advent guarded medical schools have even added culinary classes to their curriculum. Food is easily accessible and dietary interventions do not rely on expensive pharmaceutical treatments. Not many doctors know how to discuss a healthy diet with their patients. This is true not fault of the individual doctors, but rather a side effect of how little nutrition education they receive. According to David Elsenberg, a professor at the at Harvard, he has Chen School of Public Health. Only one in five medical schools in the United States requires medical students to take a nutrition course. On average, medical schools offer a mere 19 hours of course work in nutrition, and there are few postgraduate continuing education classes on nutrition for doctors already in practice. Compounding this problem is that the different branches of science that study food and health have traditionally worked independently as separate fields. Food technologists study chemical and physical properties of edible substance. Life science researchers study living organisms, including humans. Epidemiologists study real-world populations. 
each field contributes important perspectives and ideas, but they rarely converge to answer practical questions about which foods and beverages might be responsible for health benefits in, in the human body. In what amounts and what is within a specific food that causes the effect? What this all means for you is that your doctor or your aunt with deep skills and invaluable knowledge about medicines may not be fluent in advising you on what to eat for your health to beat disease. I experienced the, ramific the ramifications of this firsthand in my own practice of medicine. When I was taking care of older patients at, at a hospital for veterans, I often wonder what had happened to their bodies. These patients mostly meant what one specious, specious meant of perfect fitness, trained as, trained as warriors to fight for their country. By the time I saw them decayed, I saw them decades la later. They were often overweight, if not downright obese, di di diabetic, repaid by a terrible heart and lung diseases, and often cancer. Okay, uh, last line. Uh, this is pronounced as ravage and you pronounce as revenge. Okay. Ravage. As their doctor, I would give them the news of a terrible diagnosis. They would ask me, how bad is it? What is the treatment? How long do I have to leave? I would give them my best estimate. Then, as they were leaving my office, they would almost invariably turn and ask me, Hey, Doc, what can I eat so that I can help myself? I didn't have an answer to these questions because I hadn't been educated or trained to deal with it. That struck me as wrong and thus I began the journey to seek the answers that led me to write this book. In order to understand the benefits of food for health, we need to first understand the definition of health. To most people, health is the absence of disease, but it is much more than that. In fact, the definition of health needs a major upgrade. It's clear is that our health is an, act, is an active state protected by a series of remarkable defense systems in the body that are firing on all cylinders. From birth to our last day alive, keeping ourselves and organs functioning smoothly. This health defense system are hardwired in our body to protect us. Some are so powerful they can even reverse diseases like cancer. And while they function as separate system of defense, they also support and interact with other with one another. These defense systems are the common denominator and helped by, re by re calib calibrating our approach to disease prevent prevention and focusing on these common denominators, we can take a unified approach to intercepting diseases before they set in. This can be as powerful as finding common denominators to treat disease as we did two decades ago.
five defense systems form key pillars to your health. Each of the systems is influenced by diet. When you know what to eat to support each health defense, you know how to use your diet to maintain health and beat disease. When I teach other doctors and students about diet and health, I use the analog analogy that the body is like a med medieval fortress, fortress protected not only by its stone walls, but by a host of other clever built-in defenses. Indeed, in castles, some of these defenses, such as tailors, the true the loo, and murder hold, were not even apparent until the enemy tried to invade. Think of your health defense systems as the hidden defenses of the body fortress. These defenses heal the body from within, so it is now possible to system systematically examine, examined, examined how to shore up your health. The five defense systems are angiogenesis, regenerations, microbiome, DNA, protection, and immunity. Angiogenesis. 60,000 miles of blood vessel cause throughout our bodies and bring oxygen and nutrients to all of our cells and organs. Angiogenesis is the process by which these blood vessels are formed. Foods like soil, green tea, coffee, tomatoes, red wine, beer, and even hard cheese can influence the angiogenesis defense system. Regeneration. Powered by more than 700, 700, 750,000 stem cells distributed throughout our bone, marrow, lungs, liver, and almost all of our organs, our body regenerates itself every day. These stem cells maintain, repair, and regenerate our bodies throughout our lives. Some foods like dark chocolate, black tea, and beer can mobilize them and help us regenerate. Other foods like purple potatoes can kill deadly stem cells that spark cancer growth. Microbiome. Almost, almost 40 trillion bacteria inhabit our bodies, most of which act to defend our health. Not only do these bacteria, not, not only do these bacteria produce health supporting metabolites from the foods that we swallow and deliver to our gut. But they also control our immune system, influence angiogenesis, and even help produce hormones that influence our brains and social functions. We can boost our microbiomes by eating foods like kimchi, sauerkraut, Shadow, <clears throat> shadow cheese, and sour, sourdough bread. Okay, uh, second line. Uh, this word is metabolized, and you pronounce as uh, metabolites. Okay, metabolize. DNA protection. 
our DNA is our genetic blueprint, but it is also designed to be a defense system. It has surprising repair mechanism that protect us against damage caused by solar radiation, household chemicals, stress, compromise, sleep, and poor diet, among other insults. Not only can cert certain foods prompt DNA to fix itself, but some foods turn on helpful genes and turn off harmful ones, while other foods lengthen our lengthen our telomeres, which protect DNA and slow aging. Immunity. Our immune system depends on health. In sophisticated, sophisticated ways, they are much more complicated than we previously thought. Is influenced by our guts, and it can be manipulated to successfully attack and wipe out cancer, even in the elderly. Even in the elderly, <clears throat> recent discoveries have completely changed our understanding of the immune system. Food like blackberries, walnut, and Pomegranates can active the immune system, while other foods can damp dampen its activities and help reduce the symptoms of autoimmune diseases. This book was written to give you the, the knowledge and tools to make better decisions when you choose what to eat every day. It is intended to help you live longer by eating foods that you, you actually like. If you are fit and in good health and want to stay that way, this book is for you. If you are starting to feel your age and you want to prevent decline and stove and Stay, stay off chronic diseases. This book is for you. If you're one of the millions of people living with heart disease, diabetes, auto, autoimmune disease, or other chronic condition, this book is for you. And if you are actively battling with battling, battling a fear disease like cancer, or your family history makes it very likely that you someday will. This book is for you. I want to make it clear that this book is not presenting a total diet. If you are using a diet plan to lose weight, deal with Glutens in par in the rinse. Manage your blood sugar, slow Alzheimer's disease, Alzheimer's disease, or reverse health disease. You need to know that my goal is not to replace this specialist diet, but rather to provide you with the scientific evidence and recommendations about food you may want to incorporate into your plan. Choices that will make the plan even better. I've also included some tasty recipes to help you do just that. Um, fourth line. Fourth line, this word is specialized and you pronounce as Specialist. Oh, specialized. Everyone is afraid of disease. If your goal is to stay healthy, and especially if you are battling a disease, 
you want reliable information based on science and fact and actionable steps that you can take right away to improve your situation. The advice on foods I've included in this book is not intended to take the place of good medical care. I am not one of those doctors who rejects Western biomedicine and suggests that food is the magic solution. Quite the opposite, my training and experience in internal medicine guides my judicious use of evidence-based medicine, including surgery and cutting-edge medications. What is what it comes to diagnosis and treatment? What's missing in the toolkit of most doctors is the ability to guide an individual whether they are healthy or sick on how they can use food as a way to resist disease. How many people do you know who have asked their doctor about what they should eat to help themselves and gotten back either a blank stare or the flip answers? Eat whatever you want, eat, eat whatever you want. This book provides a very different and empowering set of answers. It to beat disease has three parts. In part one, I share the fascinating story behind the power of the health defense systems, how they were discovered, how they work and how we can harness their healing powers. Even more exciting, scientists are now studying food with the same tools and methods used to study pharmaceutical therapies. In part two, I will reveal the foods that activate the health defense systems, including some surprises. I will tell you about Aston astonishing research into more than 200 health boosting foods with some results that will make your jaw drop drop in part in part three i will give you easy and practical ways to incorporate these foods into your life i have designed a flexible tool called the five by five by five framework that makes it easy for you to boost your health by choosing foods you, lo you love every day. To get the most out of this book, I recommend, you, I recommend that you first read it once, cover to cover, to get the total pictures of how to eat to beat disease. You'll learn about health defenses, foods, and why and how to eat them. Next, we turn to the many tab tables and charts I've included that summarize the different foods and beverages and how they positively affect your health. Keep your eyes out for the foods you know you like and foods you don't yet know but might be willing to try. You should always be eating foods you enjoy and that interest you. <laughs> When you are ready, go back to part three. But now pull, <clears throat> pull out a pen and paper. Make your personalized preferred food list and complete the five by five by five daily worksheets in Appendix A, as described in Chapter 11. Then go for it. Use your worksheets to make choices about what you will eat each day to beat disease. There is no silver bullet for any one disease or for overall health and longevity. No single factors in our life is going to prevent sickness. But my research shows we have something even better. There's a way to boost 
our own defense system so the body will heal itself. These revelations tell us that we have radically underestimated our power to transform and restore our own health. If your goal is to extend the number of healthy years you have ahead, your choice, your food choices can tip the odds in your favor. By boosting your defense systems and keeping them in good shape, you'll have a better shot at beating back disease and extending not just the length, but also the quality of your life. The decisions you make on food every day throughout your lifetime offer perfect opportunities for you to stay healthy while enjoying life, just like taking the extra step, step just like taking the extra step of looking the doors before we go to bed at night. Pre prevent preventive measures use taking deliberate preventive measures using our diet is just plain common sense combined with regular exercise with quality sleep stress management and strong social bonds your diet can help you realize your your full health potential We live in a time of enormous and exciting scientific progress. So good health should be within reach of most everyone. And yet millions suffer and die from avoidable chronic illnesses. Even as more high tech treatments are invented. Between the rising cost of health care and an increasing toxic and imbalanced environment Better health is an issue of equality that affects us all. The crushing cost of medical care continues to rise, creating a precarious situation where the entire system of modern medicine is on the brink of collapse. The only way to comprehensively bring down the cost of health care is to decrease the number of people who are sick. We each need to do our part, and the best way to make the world a healthier place is to start with the choices you make for yourself and the people you care about. Let go of the idea that health is the absence of disease and start eating to beat disease every day. Bonnie Sandal and, and Bon Abdit. Yeah, all right. So this is where I have read until. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so um, how about if I make a summary? Okay. <clears throat> okay, so um, this is the starting of a new book, uh, which is called eat to beat disease and in this book we all see that um, at first there are many uh, uh, terms yeah which is um, technical and then uh, some of them are difficult to pronounce and then also uh, many of them I didn't know the meaning yep and then um, I think we'll get used to it uh, after reading maybe uh, a few more weeks and then um firstly uh there is a word which uh, uh which came up quite frequently which is angiogenesis <clears throat> yeah i think um this is something related to blood vessels and then uh, the authors uh think that we can find a common denominators uh to deal with many kind of diseases uh, and then uh, the opposite one is the uh, individuality uh, of disease, which uh, sometimes some treatment or medicine uh, that uh, that we use 
is only for a, a particular disease and not for uh, uh, other diseases. So um, the author think that uh, maybe we can focus on something which uh, can uh, can can help us to deal with the disease. And also uh, later on, he also talk about the defense system. And yeah, for uh, for the defense system, he found uh, he will talk about five uh, in this book. And the first one is angiogenesis, and uh, the other four uh, includes regeneration, microbiome, DNA protection, and immunity. Yep, and then uh, um, yeah, I think uh, uh, in this book he will focus on the on these five defense system and also uh, from the aspect of how food can help uh, can help the defense system can uh, um, can help the defense system to deal with uh, or prevent the diseases. And also he point out a fact that uh, in the reality, not many doctors know how to discuss a health a, a healthy diet. Uh, with patients and uh, maybe even we asked them and we couldn't get the answer. And also uh, because I think healthy diet is not a simple thing, even though they know maybe uh, they uh, they won't spend so many so much time uh, with you to to tell you about this. Maybe you need to also spend your time to learn uh, um, about the healthy diet. And I think also this is the purpose why we read, the, read this book. Yeah, we want to uh, uh, pursue a healthy diet. And then, um, yeah, and also uh, in this book, the author uh, uh, did mention that um, he's not the one that think that uh, food uh, diet is a better way than medicine and treatment uh, when when we really had the illnesses and uh, yeah so I think he is uh, he want to say that diet uh, is is the complement thing to treatment and medicines and uh, not uh, it is not the substitute of uh, treatment and medicines and then uh, last before end, I think the recommendations uh, can be highlighted, which is how to read the book. Yeah, and then uh, he suggests that firstly, we read the whole book uh, to, uh, in order to have a total picture um, uh, uh, of this book. And then after that, after we read uh, maybe from the first page to the last, and uh, we may go back to the tables uh, tables are something like summaries, so we can go back to tables and then to um, to uh, to get what we want. And then uh, also uh, next one is uh, something called a worksheet, five by five by five. I think uh, we haven't uh, we haven't gone through, so maybe we haven't know uh, haven't known what is that. All right, so. Uh, these are my summaries today. Yeah, the first thing, uh, <clears throat> which is one of, which one of the statistic in our reading session is about how many people was killed mm. by the, uh, by the disease. Yeah. Yeah. For example, the cancer and okay, the cardiovascular, cardiovascular disease killed yeah. 17.7 7 million people in 2015 and this is 2015 statistic maybe <clears throat> the current statistics is higher mm. and cancer killed 8.8 .8 million and diabetes diabetes killed 1.8 million and just compare to the COVID-19 COVID-19 mm. caused 4.55 million total deaths. Yeah, this is this is the bigger that I get uh, on uh, set, uh, 
16th of September. Mm. Yeah, so now it's also higher, but uh, but not uh, but should not uh, but the but the rise but the increase is in significance. So mm. if you compare if you compare 4.55 million total debt from COVID-19 with this uh, with this uh, cardiovascular disease and cancer, is it just like mm, it's just like a small case. Yeah, mm. uh, yeah, a small case. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, so uh, those chronic diseases really uh, 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 is really like uh, badly and also mm. can affect our health, can affect our quality of life. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so it is important to learn that how to deal with the disease, not only depend on the doctor and also depend on what can we do. And and think about the awareness. Many people have the awareness that we we should spend time to learn about the nutrition, to mm. learn about food, and then try to uh, try to eat healthier before you get a serious disease and go to doctor yeah. and when you go into the doctor room after the doctor tell you you have a serious disease for example diabetes or for example uh for example the heart attack mm. for example like the congestion uh, congestions of uh the blood vessel mm. yeah so after you know that and before and before you leave your room, you stand up and you are going to leave uh, to, to leave the room and then you turn you turn your head back to the doctor. Yeah, doctor, I have, I have one more question. What can I eat to to uh, to reduce to reduce and to reduce the impact of of the disease? Mm. Yeah. And you only you only will ask until the point, but it's too late. Mm. Mm. And this is also uh, one of the story uh, uh, this doctor tell us in this reading session. Yeah. Mm. So mm, the doctor also couldn't help you. Mm. First is because uh, some of them lack of knowledge because it's actually a different specialization. This mm. is not something that they focus on. Mm. Yeah. And another is mm, they are doctor. They are not the nutrition. Uh, they are not the uh, new uh, nutrient states. Yeah, uh, maybe called nutrient states, which is the people who specialize in nutrition. Yeah, mm. so they are not. Mm. And so this is the first thing. And the second thing is, mm, this actually is one of the idea that not only can apply in one aspect, can apply in many aspects. This is something that we can learn from this uh, reading section, which is the doctor. Okay, uh, in com uh, in uh, in uh, conventional, yeah, in conventional, uh, traditional uh, uh, medications is kind of like they try to differentiate one disease from other diseases and then so once they can differentiate it, one they can recognize it, they deal mm. with it each by each. So yeah. this is one of the methods. But there is there's another method which is you find the you find the commons, you find the you find the similarity mm. of these diseases and then you try to form a unified uh, a unified approach to deal with to deal with the the uh the the fundamental problem, the fundamentals, yeah, mm. yeah, uh, the fundamentals, yeah. So, uh, so you so you focus on the fundamentals and you focus on the core problems. You not focus on the surface, mm. yeah. So this is this is one, uh, one of the thing, uh, I, uh, <clears throat> this is one of 
uh, this is one of the ideas that I think is very important and we can apply in many ways, many expect. And mm. the next thing is also one of the idea. And this idea I first learned in positive psychology and the positive psychology <clears throat> tell us you you learn the happiness, you learn the positive psychology. It's not because you are unhappy. If you are happy, you can become happier. If you are unhappy, mm -hmm. you also can become happier. And positive psychology not only focus about the the mental disease, not only get you out from negative to positive. Uh, sorry, uh, not not only get you out from negative to zero. But, on, but also get you out from zero, uh, so, uh, sorry, uh, but, but also bring you from zero to positive. <clears throat> hmm. So many people think that, uh, no, uh, let's say for example, it can, it can be a disease, it can be your relationship, it can be your career, it can be anything. <clears throat> you want to solve the problem. You want to go from negative to zero to neutral. So you kind of like want to avoid the problem, but actually the things, <clears throat> if you keep working on the problem, you may miss out the, the biggest picture. Yeah, what lead to the path, what lead to the path from negative to zero and also negative to positive. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, this, is, this is two different uh, approach. These two different approaches to deal to deal with the problem. First, you view the problem as, as an illness and you try to solve it. So, <clears throat> and also you, you, you view the disease just as disease. Uh, you view the disease just as disease and you want to solve it. Yeah. And so in this reading section, the doctor, the author say that a healthy person is not, is not that free, is not the person free from disease. Yeah, mm. this is not the definition of healthy person. It's not, yeah. And healthy person should not only, should not only uh, free from disease, and also it should be really, really healthy. Yeah. Mm. So this is a positive, not just a neutral. Mm. Yeah. So this is one of things. Yeah. And the next thing, and also the last thing, which is, we can see the medical, the medical costs keep increasing. <clears throat> it's not. It's uh, maybe some of the reason is because of the inflation, it because of the money supply infinity money supply, but mm. also one another causes is the the pharmaceutical company and also the hospital, the universities, they <clears throat> they need to. They need to really find out the scientifics and also they need to do the experiments. They really need to go through the double blind, <coughs> a, a double blind experiments, <coughs> a double blind test, and to really, really ensure that this drug is, uh, is good for human body. So it, it requires to spend tons and tons of money in R&D. Mm. So <clears throat> in medication, if you want to get a scientific proven, you really need to <clears throat> do a lot of, do a lot of experiments. So this is one of the reasons that the medical the medical bills is is become higher and higher. Mm. Yeah. And for individual what can we do is we can study about the nutrition, about the food, and it's also one of the important things to reduce your spending. Yeah, to reduce your your your, your lifelong spending. Mm. So, um, if you if you are the person who pursue the financial, uh, 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 to to pursue financially independence, you also need to focus on the nutrition. Also, need to focus on the food. Because yeah. it can increase your spending. I mean, in a life in in the lifelong times. So, for example, if you if you amortize or you depreciate, you analyze 
or you monetize, monetize your uh, your medical bill, your medical expenses. For example, let's say um, you you know you normally will get sick twice per year, and each and each time will cost you like fifty. So analyze expense on medications is one hundred. Yeah, and this is this is simple. Mm. And but what if you you uh you will get the cancer, you will get a serious uh disease, uh, diabetes. Mm. So maybe the medical cost is not hundred, is not is not thousand, but is maybe maybe a few hundred thousand. And if you use few hundred thousand, you anal you, you analyze you analyze the uh, the medical cost to to your whole life, mm. and it actually increase your budget. It, in, it actually increase your your expenses, your, your spending. So you need you actually need to prepare more money in order to retire. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So this is also one of the important thing. Yeah. So yeah. So that's my summary for today. Mm. Yeah, and I think. Uh, for uh for for healthy diet um if we are not aware of it um it is something like important but not so urgent um mm. and when we started to uh look into it we started to uh, be aware of it then i think uh, it should be something urgent and important and uh also i believe that for because we uh, because this is the healthy diet pers perspective uh, on health, so uh, it's better to start as early as possible, and it will have the compo compounding effect um, to our healthy, to our health. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, I think because mm, because yeah. the the cancer the cancer cell which is damaged cells grow exponentially. Mm, mm. They will be produced exponentially. So yeah, if you if you don't do it earlier, uh, it really uh, they'll grow uh, they'll grow exponentially. So mm. just like uh, you you actually against with the compound interest. Yeah. Compound mm. Yeah, and then uh, just now you also say that uh, the definition of health healthy, uh, healthy body. Yeah, it's it's also important. Um, yeah, it's something like uh uh the in. The analogy given by the author, the defense system of a castle, yeah, it's something like that. I think, uh, if we if we keep having a healthy life, we, uh, uh, maybe we can we can get the, uh, the the compounding effect on our health, and then uh, we have a better health. We have a better defense system. Uh, it is not only like a line left or right, healthy and unhealthy. Um, yeah. We, we can be uh, even more healthier. Mm. Okay, so that's all for our today conversations. How do you feel? Did you enjoy the conversations? Please tell us what you think of our conversation. And we are not native speakers. If you found any vocal for mistake that we make, please also comment to let us know because we want to learn more and improve ourselves. Remember to like and subscribe to us. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.